and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. After years of delay, the state has just granted humanitarian status and A5 visas to 300 Sudanese asylum seekers living in Israel. Though this is seen as a major win for this community, which has been petitioning for full refugee status for nearly a decade, tens of thousands of applications still remain unanswered. Notably, humanitarian status is a step below actual refugee status, though the A5 visa does allow recipients to legally reside and work in the state of Israel. The Israeli government has long defended its refusal to grant refugee status to the nearly 40,000 asylum seekers living in the country. The vast majority, who are mostly Christians from Eritrea and Sudan, say that they fled war, genocide, and service in a slave army for a better life in Israel. The government originally intended to forcibly deport every last African man, woman, and child from the country. This plan came under intense scrutiny by the world's nations, especially since it would have deported families to a third unnamed African country with a history of human trafficking. Prime Minister Netanyahu reached a deal with the UN some months ago in which the UN would resettle half the migrants to safe Western countries in exchange for Israel absorbing the other half. But intense outrage from Netanyahu's right-wing coalition partners caused him to cancel this deal mere hours after praising it on television as the best possible one. Although the state still has yet to process thousands of requests from African asylum seekers, this is a victory for 300 of them, the one that gives them at least a temporary opportunity to thrive in the Jewish state. IDF forces have just launched raids into the Alamari refugee camp near Ramallah overnight, reportedly in search of the suspect who killed Staff Sergeant Ronen Lubarski last week. As Israeli soldiers searched the camp for a Palestinian suspect, clashes between them and residents of the camp broke out. Rubber bullets and other crowd dispersal measures were employed to stop rioters from throwing stones and Molotov cocktails. Several Palestinians were reported injured and seven arrested. The IDF has not yet released a comment. Lubarski, a 20-year-old member of the elite du Devan unit, was fatally injured when a slab of marble was dropped on his head. He and his unit were conducting an arrest raid last Thursday in the same refugee camp when the marble that killed him was thrown from a third-story rooftop. He died of his wounds in the ICU two days later and was laid to rest in the Jerusalem Mount Herzl Military Cemetery. After thousands of acres in Israeli fields have been burnt by Gazan arson, Farmers in the country's south have now announced that they plan to take these crimes to the International Criminal Court at The Hague. This move also comes shortly after Hamas officials announced plans to take Israel to the ICC over alleged abuses at their months-long March of Return protests. Israeli law center Shurat Din is calling on farmers and other citizens in Israel's south to join in the lawsuit, saying, quote, Israel will not remain silent. The current security situation in which fields and forests in Israel are being burnt every day by activists of a terrorist organization is unacceptable." End quote. Over 250 acres, or a thousand dunams of wheat fields, at just one kibbutz has been burnt to the ground in just the last two weeks alone. Shurat Adin director, attorney Nitzana Darshan Leitner, added that, quote, "...it's inconceivable that Hamas can level accusations of war crimes against Israel in the first place while using children as human shields and targeting civilians." Therefore, she said, quote, we call on the ICC at The Hague to bring them to justice, end quote. Investigations into an incident in Jerusalem Sunday night have now been opened as border police officers shot and injured an unarmed woman. There is no information yet available on the woman's identity, and police have said that all possibilities are being looked into at the moment. At the time of the incident, some of which was filmed and shared on social media, the woman can be seen approaching the officers and ignoring all calls and warnings to stop. She was wearing a black niqab, which covers her whole body and face. Police feared she was carrying an explosive device and only after firing at her found out she was unarmed. The woman was first seen by a number of witnesses who reported her as behaving suspiciously on the tracks of the light rail in Piscat Zaev. That's when border police officers arrived. Police report that, quote, the officers who considered the woman to be suspicious called for her to stop a number of times. After she failed to respond to calls to halt, they conducted the protocols for stopping a suspicious person, including firing into the air, end quote. When that too failed, they shot at her legs to neutralize the threat and then took her into custody. She was taken to the Sharet Tzedek Medical Center in Jerusalem in moderate condition. It looks like Israel's attorney general is preparing to indict Sarah Netanyahu, wife of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, with criminal charges. Sarah Netanyahu is accused of abusing state funds for her own personal use, and in the event this comes to court, that means the charges would likely be fraud and breach of trust. This is a scandal that's been brewing for quite some time now. 
from September of 2010 until at least March of 2013, Sara Netanyahu allegedly worked with a senior member of the Prime Minister's Jerusalem residence to mislead authorities into believing the estate had no chef employed in the premises. Under this apparent guise, Sara Netanyahu then allegedly authorized meals for the Netanyahu residence, amounting to at least 359,000 shekels of taxpayer money. At this time, there is a state witness, the Prime Minister's residence, former caretaker, who is said to have corroborated the police's evidence. Israel's Attorney General Avichai Mandelblit has ordered Netanyahu's lawyer to reach a settlement in the coming days or else be prepared to see this case in court. Netanyahu's legal team allegedly reached a compromise of a plea bargain in which Netanyahu would reimburse the state for at least part of the money, as well as confess to a degree of the charges. Sarah Netanyahu reportedly refused this idea herself, however. Her legal team has argued that these charges cannot be mounted because Sarah Netanyahu is not, in fact, a public servant. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.